in a paper titled Pushing the Frontiers of Density Functionals by Solving the Fractional Electron Problem. So you're taking on modeling and simulating the quantum mechanical behavior of electrons. Yes. Uh, can you explain this work and can AI model and simulate arbitrary quantum mechanical systems in the future? Yeah, so this is another problem I've had my eye on for you know a decade or more, which is um, uh, sort of simulating the properties of electrons. If you can do that, you can basically describe how elements and materials and substances work. So it's kind of like fundamental if you want to advance material science. Mm. Um, and, uh, you know, we have Schrodinger's equation and then we have approximations to that density functional theory. These things are, you know, are famous. And um, people try and write approximations to, to, these, uh, uh, to these functionals and, and kind of come up with descriptions of the electron clouds, where they're going to go, how they're going to um, interact when you put two elements together. Uh, and what we try to do is learn a simulation, uh, uh, learn a functional that will describe more chemistry, types of chemistry. So um, until now, you know, you can run expensive simulations, but then you can only simulate very small uh, molecules, very simple molecules. We would like to simulate large materials. Um, and so uh, today there's no way of doing that. And we're building up towards uh, building functionals that approximate Schrodinger's equation and then allow you to describe uh, uh, what the electrons are doing. Um, and all material sort of science and material properties are governed by the electrons and, and how they interact. So I have a good summarization of the simulation through the functional, um, but one that is still close to what the actual simulation would come out with. So what... Um, how difficult is that task? What's involved in that task? Is it running those those complicated simulations yeah. and learning the task of mapping from the initial conditions and the parameters of the simulation, learning what the functional would be? Yeah. So it's pretty tricky. And we've done it with, um, you know, the nice thing is we there are we can run a lot of the simulations, the, the, the molecular dynamic simulations on our compute clusters. And so that generates a lot of data. So in this case, the data is generated. So we like those sort of systems. And that's why we use games. It's simulator generated data. Uh, and we can kind of create as much of it as we want, really. Um, and just let's leave some, you know, if any computers are free in the cloud, we just run, we run some of these calculations, right? Compute <laughs> cluster calculations. I like how the, the, the free compute time is used up on quantum mechanics. Yeah, quantum simulation. mechanics, exactly. Simulations <laughs> and protein simulations and other things. And so, um, and so, you know, when you're not so Searching on YouTube for, for yeah. video, cat videos, we're using those computers usefully <laughs> in quantum chemistry, the idea, oh, and, and uh, putting them good. to good use. And then, yeah, and then all of that computational data that's generated, we can then try and learn the functionals from that, which of course are way more efficient uh, once we learn the functional than um, running those simulations would be.